Welcome to the second Unisim tutorial. This tutorial assumes some basic process simulation knowledge within the Unisim or HiSys environment and is intended to demonstrate how to set up and converge distillation columns to a design specification. The context of this tutorial will be the separation of an idealized hydrocarbon mixture coming from a refinery unit operation. On the whiteboard, we'll introduce the topics that the tutorial covers and then introduce the block diagram of the process. We'll also define the simulation aim and state the thermodynamic model that we'll be using. Once we've established a model basis, we'll dive straight into how we set up the model on Unisim. So, the topics covered in this tutorial are going to be the use of shortcut columns and how shortcut columns can be used to initialize rigorous distillation columns. We're going to look at the default convergence state for rigorous simulation columns. Then we'll look at how to reconverge these rigorous columns to required specifications. We're also going to look at some troubleshooting because we'll see that the convergence of one column within a column sequence may depend critically on the performance of columns upstream of it. And so we need to be able to keep a fairly broad outlook when we start to try and figure out how to get a distillation column sequence to work. So the aim of this simulation is to design a sequence of distillation columns to separate a five component hydrocarbon mixture to a set of design specifications. What we require from the simulation are numbers of stages, idealized stages, the feed position, the reflux ratio, plus energy use for each separation system. We also require some mechanical information such as column diameters, pressure drops, and other information pertaining to hydraulics. So this is a fairly detailed unit design that we're going to be doing. Now, the conditions that the columns are going to be run under are as follows. Our distillation feed consists of 5 mole percent of methane, 10 mole percent of n-pentane, 25 mole percent of n-hexane, 35 mole percent of n-heptane, with a balance of n-octane. Our feed flow into the distillation system is going to be set at a basis of 100 kilomoles per hour. The feed is available at 85 degrees C and a pressure of 4 bar absolute. So let's think about the block diagram of the process. So here's our feed, our hydrocarbon mixture, our five component mixture. And the first thing we're going to do is recognize that the volatility of methane is far greater than that of the next most volatile species, which was N pentane. And so we're going to separate out the methane to start with using a simple separation system. We're going to look at a flash separator for this particular bit. So then what we're going to do is look at a distillation column that concerns the pentane recovery. So we'll have a depentanizer. Then we're going to look at a distillation column that removes the hexane, a dehexanizer, leaving the heavier components, heptane and octane, as residue. Now, we need some information in order to start this simulation, so let's look at the information that we need. Firstly, we're going to assume that the Peng-Robinson thermodynamic model is going to be valid for this system. The Peng-Robinson thermodynamic model is a cubic equation of state. It is very well suited for hydrocarbon mixtures. You can go ahead and validate this using some bubble point data you find in literature if you wish. But we're going to make the assumption that this is a validated model that you can use. And so we're going to skip that validation step and put our faith in the fact that that pre-validation performed by some other third party is indeed accurate and concise. We're going to look at separating out n-pentane and n-hexane at a purity of 99 mole percent. So n-pentane and n-hexane are the distillates for our second and third separation device. And that constraint of 99 mole percent is something that you should always question. The amount of energy required to produce 99 mole percent as compared to 95 mole percent is significantly more, which of course will affect the sustainability, the sustainability of the process as well as the operating cost. So always question your purity targets very, very closely and ask why they're set to that value. We're going to make the assumption that it 99% has been set, but you should always know why it has been set. We're going to assume that all the columns are trade columns. We're going to look at using sieve trays. Now this will affect the column hydraulics and things like the weeping rates. Also thinking about hydraulics, we're going to design these columns to a 70% flood point, and then we'll see what column diameters result from that. 
Okay, so I've opened up Unisim once again, and I'm now going to select a new case and go through that workflow that we discussed in the last tutorial. So we're going to define our components, then we're going to define our thermodynamics. Ordinarily, we would define reactions, but of course, we don't have any reactions in this distillation problem. So in the components tab, I'm going to look at the master component list. So I'm going to view and I'm going to populate the master component list with the hydrocarbons that are found in our problem, which are methane and pentane and hexane and heptane and n octane. I'm only going to be using the one component list again. Just to remind you, you can, of course, use multiple component lists for complex simulations, but we're not doing that here. And very usefully, we find that those N-alkanes are the first components listed within Unisim's database. So we don't need to search. So we can just left-click methane, add pure, N-pentane, add pure, N-hexane, N-heptane, and N-octane. So there are the five hydrocarbon species. So that defines my component list. So I'm going to close that window and I'm going to move on to the thermodynamic package. Again, the default is to have no thermodynamic package. I'm going to add a new one. The thermodynamic description we're going to use for this particular example is the Peng Robinson equation of state. It's a cubic equation of state that is very well suited for mixtures of homologous hydrocarbons and all four all five components that we have are alkanes, and so the Penn-Robinson equation is a very useful equation of state to use. To find it, I'm going to single left click on the EOS button, the equation of state button, and then I can see Penn-Robinson right there. So I'm going to left click on that, and I see my traffic light icon goes green, and so I close that selection. So I don't have any reactions, so now my First three steps of my workflow are complete and I can enter the simulation environment. Now that I'm in the simulation environment, the first thing I'm going to do is to define the material stream that is entering my distillation sequence. So I'm going to single left click the material stream and drag it onto the flow sheet. I'm going to double left click it. And the first thing I'm going to do is go to the composition and define the composition that we've been given. So I'm going to single left click methane and I have five mole percent of methane or mole fraction 0.05. I now see this second screen appear and I'm going to continue entering the mole fractions for each of the streams. So there was 10 mole percent or a mole fraction of 0.1 for n-pentane, 25 mole percent or for mole fraction 0.25 for n-hexane, 35 mole percent or 0.35 mole fraction for n-heptane and 25 mole percent or 0.25 mole fraction for n octane. Now I can see the total here thankfully as to one and so that fully defines the compositions of my stream. So I'm going to single left click OK. Unisim still has the yellow flag here saying unknown flow rate. That is perfectly reasonable because we've defined these components in terms of a molar fraction specification, not a molar flow rate specification. And so we need to go back to the conditions page here to enter the flow of all the species summed together. Our feed flow into our distillation sequence is 100 kilomoles per hour. So let's put in 100 kilomoles per hour. Unknown temperature, our temperature is 85 degrees C. And our pressure is 4 bar or 400 kPa. So there is the material stream defined. We note that there is a slight amount of vapor. There's 5% vapor, which corresponds to that methane plus a little bit of volatile um, gas from the lighter fractions in this stream. The final thing, as before, that I'm going to do is give this material stream a sensible human readable name. I'm just going to call it hydrocarbon feed. Like so, okay, so I'm going to close that selection box and then I'm going to think about how I plan my distillation sequence. Now, if you recall the block diagram, the first thing that we were going to do was some methane recovery. If we double left click this material stream and go to composition again, and if we expand this box to the right, we can see what's in the vapor phase and what's in the liquid phase. So we have some 
methane dissolved in the hydrocarbon species. In the liquid phase, we have 1.1 mole percent of methane. In the gas phase, however, we have 70 mole percent of methane. So the sensible thing to do to start with is because this is a two-phase system, is to reduce it to two single-phase systems. We're going to do that using a flash drum. And so I'm going to single left click and drop the flash drum onto my flow sheet. I'm going to give it my hydrocarbon feed. I'm going to give it a vapor outlet stream, V100 vapor. And we're going to give it a liquid outlet stream, V100 liquid. And so those definitions are sufficient to fully specify this unit operation because we're not specifying an energy stream. So if we close that definition box, and if we look at the composition of the vapor stream, we see that we have 5.6 kilomoles per hour consisting of roughly 70 mole percent methane as expected. Because each of the hydrocarbon species also exert a partial pressure at the conditions within the simulation, we also have a small amount of these other hydrocarbons present as well. And if we look at the liquid stream, we find that we have a total flow rate of about 94.4 kilomoles per hour. And the composition here shows that there's still a little bit of dissolved methane in this hydrocarbon stream. We need to be very careful with that dissolved methane when we look at our first distillation column, because if we force our condenser in our first distillation column to run to a dew point, it will run to the dew point of methane and run very, very cold. I'll remind you of that by demonstration when we have a look at setting up our first column in a minute.